Hey guys, it's Paolo. So today is gonna be such a good episode because I get to talk to writer, producer, actor, and Emmy Award winner, Lena Waithe from Master of None. And now she has a powerful show called The Shy that she created and wrote. And let me tell you, it is so good that you all have to watch it, okay? So I'll see you guys with Lena, and I can't wait. Good? Lights? Mics? Good? Are you ready? I'm ready. Hi! Hi! This is like for me to be here with you. Like we were so excited this worked out. So thank you. Of course. In your home. And this, we're here. she trusts us to be in here. So yeah. thank you. Thank You're you. You're at my crib. Welcome. <laughs> okay. So Miss Emmy Winner. Oh, I love <laughs> saying that. Um, when you hear that like Miss Emmy Winner, I'm just curious, do you, does it still, do you get excited like when people introduce you as when you're on shows and everything? Yeah, I mean, it's funny because it's that weird thing of like, I kind of just go about my life and yeah. don't think about it every day. So then when I do mm -hmm. an event and like somebody goes, oh, Emmy winning, you know, writer, Lena Waithe, I go, oh, yeah, 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 that's, that's true, that happened. I just try, I think the big thing for me, even though it was a huge accomplishment mm. and it actually happened in my career a lot sooner than I thought it would, mm. but it's a thing where I try not to rest on it. Mm. I try not to go, well, huh, I have it in me, so uh, let's do I it do this it. way. <laughs> you know, so I don't, I, I'm still a fighter. I'm still yeah. a student. I'm still a hustler. And I think the Emmy, as great as it is, mm. and I'm grateful for it, I think for me, I try to put it out of my mind a little bit mm. when I go through my daily life because I don't ever want to rest on that. Mm. I want to continue to be a student and continue to fight. Yeah, but every time you come things. down your stairs and I see where your Emmy is right above you, uh -huh. right over there, yeah. I'm sure it's just a little reminder to tell you that things can be achieved if you do the work and you put it in there and that's what you've been doing. Yeah. You know, I remember your Emmy speech. I just want to bring it up because it was so touching. It was so beautiful. Thank and there was you. a part where you um, you thanked your family and you thanked us, the LGBTQ plus community. Mm -hmm. Patrick and I were sitting there on the couch. We cried Aww. because we felt we were part of that. And yeah. your speech was so beautiful. When people talk about your Emmy for you, what stands out the most when you think about your Emmy hmm. win? I think the fact that it wasn't just about me. Mm. I think the fact that I really did want to share that moment with mm. all of us. Because okay. anyone who has ever had to come out, it's yeah. the least fun experience mm -hmm. ever. Um, and I didn't think my coming out story was actually that extraordinary, funny enough. I really mm. didn't. I, um, I think maybe because it's mine and I had a very specific kind of mother mm. and, you know, a very specific kind of like family and home and situation and so and luckily Aziz and Alan were said to me no this we have never seen that before we've mm. never seen a black woman come out on tv before mm. and I thought oh yeah I've not seen that before either and so they were like just for that simple fact they're like mm. we should do it and also they, th they also said we think your story is very interesting mm. and how it all happened um and so I thought okay cool so for me it was for anyone that ever come out it was for people of color as well. And also yeah. it was a moment that I think I shared with so many funny women who yeah. I know have written funny and amazing episodes of television. Yeah. And because of the times we live in, they hadn't been recognized. And I think for me to be a vessel, to be the first one through the door was a huge honor. First one. First one. That crazy. is just amazing. When we talk about this the episode, Thanksgiving episode, which mm -hmm. is in Master of None, um, did you have anything, when you were co-writing it, did you have anything that it could be nominated or no. that possibly you are going to win? Like, did no. that ever cross your mind? Absolutely not. Wow. I thought, oh, this is going to be the black episode of Master of None this season. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, great. I thought that was really cool. Oh my God. I was yes. like, that cool. I'm like, okay. Um, and, uh, <laughs> but I just really didn't, I had no idea at all. Mm. And I think for me, when I was writing it, I just really was trying to remember all those things about my childhood, mm. about how I was a little different mm. and about that moment. I mean, I literally came out in a diner, like, uh, you know. That's easy. how it happened. And that's what yeah. we saw on the show. Yeah. Oh, I was like, I'm not changing nothing. I'm like, uh, how I remember this yeah. is how I'm going to write it. And and I wasn't trying to be shocking. I wasn't trying to be sentimental. I just wanted to make sure that my mom didn't come off like a villain because mm. she isn't. Mm -hmm. I wasn't the hero. Mm -hmm. We just were two people that were trying to figure something out that we'd never been faced with before. For me, like watching it, you know, it was just so perfect. And then you had Angela Bassett who played your mother. Who's phenomenal. And you had, oh, phenomenal. And you had Kim Whitley who played your My aunt. My aunt, yeah. And just the Who's also amazing. So funny. She was on her show and I love her. Love her. She's so, oh, so gosh. funny. She's brilliant. Um, but just remember, I remember watching, remember the first line um, that your mother, Angela Bassett, Denise's mm -hmm. mother, mm -hmm. she said, I don't want life to be hard for you. That was right. her first line. And mm -hmm. I remember a lot of us can relate to that because I think our parents don't want our life to be Correct. hard. But the thing is, don't you think when people say that, it's like, well, our life will be hard if we're being someone that we're not. So That's it's like, true. You want to be your authentic self, and I think that's what you were trying to portray and show. Like this is yeah. me, this yeah. is me, and don't worry about everyone else. 
just worry about me and it's gonna be okay. Yeah. It was so good. Thank you. And I think that's what, because also too, I think the scary thing about coming out is that you have to mentally prepare yourself for your family to walk away from you. Oh yeah. So that's the thing that I think people who have never come out before yeah. don't understand the weight of that. So yeah. people wonder, oh, why did it take you so long? Or what happened? It's like, cause like, that's what you're sort of mentally preparing yeah. yourself for. Yeah. And that's a heavy thing. Yeah, it is. Um, and so that's why, and I did say this at the time, I said, I'm still your daughter. Mm. I, there was yep. an element of like me w wanting things to not change. And even you see how I'm, my character is wrong, mm -hmm. as a la Lino is wrong, mm -hmm. and that things will change. Yep. They can never be the same again. Yeah. And it doesn't necessarily always have to be bad, yeah. but you have to own the fact that now that you've spoken your truth, oh. there are gonna be ripple effects from that. And That's I'm just so really true. grateful that they let, allowed me to tell the story in the way that I did, because I had to tell it over time, mm -hmm. because coming out was such a process mm -hmm. for me. And I think for most people. Yeah, and you do it on your time. Yeah. There's no like, I have to be out by this certain time. You do when no. you feel ready, when you know that you have the courage to tell. Cause you don't really do it for your family too. You do what I learned from my husband. You do it for yourself. Yes. Cause it takes you to yeah. another place when you can be your authentic self. Yep. Then things will start coming your way, which we see what's happening with your career and mm -hmm. your life. Mm -hmm. This is just amazing. I mean, that's the thing. Like, for me to be celebrated so for being a gay person, that was the coolest thing about it. It's like, yeah. I really spent a lot of my life wondering why God decided to make me gay. Mm. That's the thing. I was like, why am I? Because I also have a sister who's like straight She's as hell. Straight. I remember you saying that, yeah. And... And obviously my family, I mean, there's like no, like, there's no that many gay people that are coming makes through my house. But show, that's right. right. Exactly. So, um, although I did have like gay uncles who like, yeah. the word was never said, and you know, one was a See? hairstylist, one was a, you know. Like, uh, the hairstylist, you know, hello, a, a I flight, love you. Another was a flight attendant, so it was like so <laughs> cliche. But, and I, and I, but funny enough, I always felt the connection to them as a young person, but mm -hmm. like, it was a black family, so nobody was talking. They never brought um significant others home yeah. for like holidays and stuff like that yeah. so i think for me that kind of also made me wonder well what is my life going to be am i going to be in the shadows yeah. and i'm grateful that i said no i don't yeah. want to be in the shadows and because of that and then me telling my story mm -hmm resulted in a standing ovation at the Emmy. Your so. story is life changing, which is changing so many lives. It's helping you. Um, okay, so I want to move on. We have to talk about the shy. Yes. Both of us being from Chicago. Come on. I just have to say, and I said this in the intro when I taped it, I remember saying powerful. It's so powerful and well done. Thank you. Just amazing, really. I mean, you have to be so proud of yourself because I Thank think this is so the much. first time you created and wrote. Yeah. I mean, Take that in. Like, what does that feel like? I mean, because you are, you're breaking the glass wall. Like, you're doing so much. So what does that feel like to have a show that's, it's highly rated. People are loving it. They're yeah. connecting with it. Um, what does that feel like for you? It feels like people are giving me a huge hug, mm. you know, because I wrote, it's true. It's because I wrote that, wow, like three years ago. I wrote that pilot three years ago for free. Mm. I wrote it on spec because wow. I just had to get it out. And I really was reading a lot of James Baldwin at the time. Mm -hmm. I was reading a lot of Langston Hughes, which I tend to always do, looking for inspiration. And the thing that I love so much about Baldwin's writing is that he really can see black people. He yeah. really saw the God in us when the world didn't. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really wanted to do. I was like, I want to, I, and I feel like I have that ability. I yeah. feel like Toni Morrison has it. I feel like yeah. Lorraine Hansberry had it. I mean, Lorraine Hansberry had it. I feel like there are certain black writers and just see the God in black people. Yeah. And that's what they're trying to capture on the page. Yeah. And that's what I want to continue to capture every time I write something because there are black people that don't realize they have God in them. Yeah. And I want to remind them, hold up a mirror and say, look at you, yeah. like you are a beautiful creation. You're amazing. And we're flawed, you know, we're not perfect, but we're human. And yeah. I think for a long time, this country didn't see us as human beings. Yeah. And I think we're still healing from that. And I think that is the result of what the shy is. But that's why the show is so good because like even me being from Chicago, what you see in the news is people gunshots, but right. you don't you don't see the before and the after and how they deal with it. And on your yeah. show, you see it's like the cameras close up in the beginning, like we saw in the first episode, and right. then you like you pull it away and you see the aftermath. You yes. see the funeral, you see what the mother is going through, you see that it's just it's heartbreaking. And it's mm -hmm. like they're just living their life like we are. That's really what I'm trying to do is to show that our, all of our lives are intertwined, mm. whether you want to think that or not. And also to show that we have a lot more in common than we think. Yeah. Um, and I think to me, a, a big compliment is when a white person that lives in Brentwood is like, hey, The Shy is my favorite show. I see the humanity in it. That's, or even when a white straight guy comes mm -hmm. up to me and says, Thanksgiving was my favorite episode. That, that's when art is doing its job. Mm. When you can see yourself in someone like me or a character in The Shy, 
even though they, we don't look alike, even though we come from different backgrounds, we still have that human connection. It's the love. We all have this love inside and we yeah. connect with one another. Um, this is why two words Emmy winner, like that's why this is all making sense. I know she doesn't like to brag about it, but I'm going to brag for her. Um, this is what I love about you so much because you're on this, this, this success where you're going, but you still are helping other people. Oh yeah. You're so young. This is all happening around you, but you still are helping other. Where do you get that gene from that you're helping these other people while you're still trying to like figure out where you want to go? I think it's something about me wanting to be a bit of an activist in that mm. way. And I think this town is good about saying, oh, we don't know where all the black writers are. Mm. Or, well, sh I don't have a list. Or who are these people of color that you speak of? And for me, I'm going to say, okay, then I'll go find them and mm. bring them to you and introduce mm. them to you. And their work is going to be so phenomenal that you won't be able to deny them. Wow. That's my mission. So I can't just take if you have a black person on the street and they go, I'm a writer. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm not going to help you unless I get a real sense of where your writing mm. is. Let me look at, look at the material. And if the material is phenomenal, I'm going to send it out to the whole Hollywood. And everybody I have relationships with to go, yo, read this person right now. If the material is just okay, then rather than expose you to the market before you're ready, yeah. I'm going to sit with you and go, hey, you got to work on character. Yeah, hey, your so story, you, you're not that great with story yet. Or hey, your structure is really strong, but your characters are two-dimensional. Mm. Let's work on making these characters three-dimensional and then your script is really going to pop. Give it back to me and then we'll talk about sending it out there. So I think a big thing that people get mistaken with the whole mentorship thing, they just think it's about patting somebody on the mm. head and giving them a PA gig. Mm. No, I want to know where do you ultimately want to go? Wow. I always ask people, say, what's your dream? Where do you see yourself five That's years from so now? Good. Where do you see yourself a year from now? Th but don't you And because... then I can figure out how I can be helpful but don't them. think that advice what you're saying that's where you are today because you always knew you knew when you were seven you wanted to be a writer but then you also knew that look my dream is to be right for a 30 minute comedy series mm -hmm. like you pinpointed it and i think when you know exactly the specifics the little details yep. you know you go through all these little things this happened this happened but you want to get there and i think that's the best example is just know exactly what you want. Yep. That dream that's inside of you, right? Absolutely. And I think there's an element for some people go, well, I want to do everything. Okay. Mm -hmm. I get that. But the problem with saying that is that you don't ever know where to start. <sighs> Amen. And what happens is you try to do everything and wind up getting nothing done. Mm. So it's a big piece of advice I give to a lot of baby writers. I go, well, I want to write. I want to direct. I want to star. I want to produce. Okay. That's a beautiful list, mm -hmm. but let's treat it as such a list. What's the first thing? What's number one on the list? And they go, mm. okay, writing. Okay, fantastic. Let's conquer that. Mm. And if you conquer that and garner some sort of success from it, then they'll say, what else do you want to do? Because mm. this was so good. Or you had this really great accomplishment. Okay, same thing with the Emmy. Like me conquering writing mm. in a way, even though I'm still trying to conquer it. In the industry terms, they figured I've conquered it because I won an Emmy for something I wrote. Mm. But now what they say is, well, now the world is yours. What do you want to do next? You know, and so I think to me, it's like I want people to figure out what their first thing is, master it, and then go to the next thing on your list. And then you go, okay, well, I want to act. Okay, great. We'll start, we'll plug you in. You ain't got to audition for stuff if you're really a phenomenal writer because mm -hmm. they want to they be in right. business. Yeah. Then you go, I want to produce. Okay, we have this project we want that we need or whatever. So I think it's about doing it one thing at a time. Mm. But until you've conquered the first thing on your list, don't look at the other stuff. Yeah. Because like, you're going to get distracted. You're you'll gonna get distracted. Get lost. Did you write this down? Are you writing this down? Because this is, this is so, Take so notes, good. Man. You know, I want to end with this because um, obviously with the Golden Globe, time's up. It was so powerful. Yeah. And there was a quote I want to talk about because it was so, so, so good. Um, I'm going to read this to you because this yeah. is quoting for you. Um, <laughs> I think the biggest thing is just to create a barrier around not just women, but anyone who's othered in any way, shape, or form to make sure they have a place to go or someone to call if they are in an uncomfortable place or an abusive situation. They need a line of defense, and I think Time's Up really has the potential to be that. Yeah. That was so beautiful. I just wanted to bring awareness because that was so good what you said. Um, and. Yeah, thank you for saying that. Because it's this GoFund, I think they have almost 20 million. Yeah. And it's it's awareness and it helps people who can't afford it, who Absolutely. are, you know, who can't leave their job. And it's like, there's a place to go. So you saying that and you being on this platform, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for thank that. Thank you. Really. And I yeah. think that there's this misconception that Time's Up is just about white women yeah. and sexual harassment. Yeah. And I think that but. that we would be failing if that's all that Time's yeah. Up was about. And because I'm a part of Time's Up, it will never just be about that. Because yeah. I'm too loud for that to happen. Yes. It needs to be about people of color. It yes. needs to be 
about racism in our industry. It needs to be about homophobia, yeah. transphobia, um, Islamophobia, like whatever phobia people have, yeah. we need to make sure that whatever you are, whoever you are, is not only respected, but celebrated yeah. while you're trying to pursue your dream. It's so true. So that's that's my mission, you know, within the organization slash, you know, um, campaign really, I think is what it should be called, because we're really just trying to make sure like there's no, we're not sending personal invites for people to come yeah. be a part of it. It's like, we want people to join us and stand with us and support mm. us because that's the only way this business is going to change. Yes. There's heavy hitters. It's not just like small folks. It's just yeah. like these are big wigs who are like, we have had enough. And it starts with us. And yeah. we feel like hopefully it'll permeate through the world where every work environment is safe um, and it's a place where you can flourish and grow. Thank you for using a platform for that. You know, so in honor of you, we decided for today to donate um, $200 in honor oh of you to the Time's Up um, Legal Defense Fund. So thank it just, you, it's a way to bring in awareness. And thank you for using your platform and helping others. So thank, just you. thank you. Thank that you. That means a lot to me. So this is your check. Okay. I'll make sure to give it to the powers that be. Yes. And this is going to go help somebody. This is amazing. You're welcome. Yes. Thanks, you, oh, my God. You're welcome. Oh, my Ooh, God. You're so, so sweet. I just want to say... Thank you again for letting us be here. Thank you You're for coming. such an inspiration. You really, and you are so kind, so beautiful, so loving. And Thank I just, you. I'm gonna always be cheering you on because you deserve everything that comes your way because you put in the work. And Thank that you, is man. the best gift you can do, okay? You inspire me. Okay. Thank you for being here. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Thank you so much. You really are inspiring people because you're not waiting for someone's permission yeah. to come do a show. You're doing it. And people like myself and so many others have come on because of your energy, because of your heart, because of your spirit. And I'm always here for you, man. I'm always rooting for you. And I'm always cheering you on. Oh Truly. Okay. I've been cheering you on since that Oprah episode. Oh okay? All right? And we still cheer. I can't believe you remember that. Oh, my of God. Of course. That was a long time ago. No, please. Look at how fierce and fabulous you are. Oh, my God. Did you hear that, and America? you ain't changed either. I don't oh know why he's, he's bathing in baby's blood. It's, I eat a lot of Nutella. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, okay, so I just want to say this shy, please, please, on Showtime, um, on Sundays. Sunday nights, Sunday yes. nights, you can catch the first couple, three episodes, um, just please, it's going to just, it's going to open your mind and you're going to get it. So beautiful. Thank you, love. Congratulations. Thank you, boo. I appreciate you. I shall be boo. Okay, bye, boo. I love bye, you. Boo. <laughs> bye, boo. Bye, bye everyone. Thank you for seeing us on Spoonful of Power. We'll see you next time. Mwah. Mwah. Yay. Oh my God, you're the best. We did it. That we was did great. It.